Hello. Hey, everybody. Hope everyone's been enjoying their first day of South by Southwest Interactive. We're really excited for this next talk, Super Fandom in the Digital Age. If you've ever seen Watch What Happens Live, you know that Mr. Andy Cohen, Mr. Andy Cohen's going to keep things pretty interesting up here. So let's please give a round of applause for all the panelists, Tyler Oakley, Grace Helbig, Zay Frank, and Andy Cohen. Hey, everybody. Okay. How are you? <laughs> um, <laughs> Quiet. What, what did you say? St. Louis in the house. Excellent. I love it. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Andy Cohen. I'm the host of Watch What Happens Live. I am very excited because we're uh, going to be doing Watch What Happens Live for the second year in a row uh, here at South by Southwest starting Sunday night. I'll have Jimmy Kimmel on the show live. It's going to be great, uh, but I'm not here to show myself tonight. I'm actually here to talk about these guys and we're going to, you know, digital has revolutionized the traditional ways in which content makers and celebrities have connected with fans breaking down barriers and offering users a direct way of communicating. We have a great, well-rounded panel of folks here to discuss fandom in the digital age. I'm gonna let each of them give you a brief intro of their background, starting with Zay to my left. Uh, I've been uh, making media for a while now. Uh, currently, I'm the executive vice president of uh, BuzzFeed and Video. And uh, that's what's going on. Very good. Grace Helbig, superstar. Hi. Um, are you all alive out there? <laughs> yeah. OK. Hooray. Hooray. Not, didn't walk into like a room of cadavers. Uh, I, my name is Grace Helbig. I have a YouTube channel called It's Grace. Uh, I make five videos a week, Monday through Friday. And it's a fun time. And is how it, many subscribers it? do you have? Uh, currently, I have 1.6 million. Which Not too shabby. Yeah. Um, Tyler Perfect. Oakley. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Tyler. I am a YouTuber. Um, I make videos on my YouTube channel. I've been doing it for seven years. Uh, I talk about pop culture and I drink a lot and uh, I talk about my life um, and I interview people, things, fun things like that. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. Very good. Okay, so we want this to be interactive. So if you guys want to tweet questions um, to at Bravo TV and use the hashtag AskHosts, okay? Ooh, rolls off the tongue. Don't <laughs> use the, at, the, the hashtag AskHosts. Right. It's yeah. very close, just one letter away. Very different. I'll be checking that, that hashtag. Different. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do that, and I will. I'm gonna try to grab them on here, even though this says that it's the system's failing. Okay, we'll see what happens. Um, what I wanna I wanna start and just ask each of you if you could pick only one Twitter person to follow, one Twitter handle to follow, who would it be and why? Wow. That's easy. Who's your fan? <laughs> Is the whole hour going to be like Myself? This? <laughs> it's very uh, no. difficult. Um, Cher, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you don't follow Cher on Twitter, it's an experience. Um, yeah. She <laughs> is everything. She uh, is very confused, or she knows exactly what she's doing, and she keeps you on your feet. It's half uppercase, uppercase half lowercase. A lot of emojis that don't make sense. Um, and it's very frantic. And then she goes to bed. Like, she it's amazing. She goes to bed very late, I have to add. Yeah. Very late. She rarely sleeps. Um, uh, I would say, on that same vein, Tyra Banks is really yes, great. Yes, really. She's yeah. bringing her A game. Yeah, she makes like good jokes, okay. but also it has that frantic style of uppercase, lowercase, like, okay. uh, you know, the commas where there shouldn't be commas, period. Smizing. <laughs> Smizing, but it's great, and uh, it's very relatable, yeah. You guys like, um, you guys like crazy ladies on Twitter. Well, Twitter I, Twitter. I think they're, they know what they're doing. Right. I think they're in on their own game. I you hope don't so. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I just like uh, somebody that you just sit back at and you're like, 
What's going on on their side of the laptop? <laughs> who, who's your, who's your go-to follow? I'm gonna say Hugh Laurie. Really? I, think I, I, I just, I think a lot of people don't appreciate how huge he is in the comedy world yeah. and, and just in, how incredibly insightful, smart, and funny he is. Um, and yeah, his Twitter account's awesome. I mean, it's just really, really funny type clever stuff. Um, Dustin in our audience wants to know if you guys were prepared to become micro celebrities. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he meant it as a, hey, I think he meant it as a compliment, actually. Like, I think of myself as a mini celebrity, not a, not a <laughs> micro. <laughs> I'm more of a macro celebrity. More of a macro. Okay. Okay. Um, if you guys could <laughs> we didn't use answer only, that. Yeah, no. just, just, if you guys could use only one social platform oh. for eternity, what would it be? Tumblr? Because you can make text posts, which will be your tweets. Yeah. You can make video content, which will be YouTube. You can do upload all your photos. There goes Instagram. And it's a community, so you don't need Facebook. Tumblr. Please and thank you. <laughs> what about you, Zay? Just I am. I am, I am from here on out. Yeah. I'm still holding on to my LinkedIn stock. <laughs> Google Plus for me. Do the LinkedIn me. emails ever stop, by the way? Uh, no, I, ever I can't no. figure it out. I, I mark them either. as spam every time. Right. It doesn't. They don't stop. <laughs> they might be this here. is an interesting question. Um, Maria Kathleen wants to know, what irritates your fans the most on social? Is there something that you know that if you do it will bug the, your followers? Yes. What? If I respond to like negative people, they're like, pay attention to the people that love you. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. But like, let me just be sassy for a second. Like, right. they don't like it when I get sassy with like the haters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think, I mean, if I try to be more intelligent than I am sometimes, uh, or if I'm just inauthentic, if there's something that doesn't seem like it came from me. I guess, uh, yeah, that's the only thing that comes to mind right now. It's probably uh, so much more. This is the million dollar question. What is the secret sauce to creating good content? What is the, you, you cre you're in charge of the production company that makes all the videos for Buzzfeed. You told me backstage your number one video has like 13 million views, is that right? Yeah, yeah something in that range. So is there, What's the guarantee that you're going to put something out there and that people are going to want to watch it over and over? I, I, and like, share it. It, we should just modify the question a little bit because good has, has probably a different implication. Because like, I think that every, every piece of content probably has like, slightly different goals. And a lot of the video creation time that I've had, I haven't been looking at scale. I haven't really been thinking about trying to maximize the number of views. Um, so in that, w during that phase, it was really about emotional connection and like certain kinds of participation. But in terms of like trying to get, uh, you know, things that really scale, I really think about, um, you know, the, the the social quality of the content and then the framing. And so the the big three piece pieces I think of it are uh, what I would call identity. So in other words, does the piece of content represent a part of your identity better than uh, you could talk about it, or does it? represent a, a part of somebody else's identity in a way that you could just give them the content to show that you recognize that piece of their identity. And then the two other categories are emotional gift. So this makes me feel a certain way. I'd like you to feel that way. And the third category would be the social role of information, um, which is like the humble brag and things like that. Or, or when media can prove an argument that you've been having all along. So it's not about new content, but it's about how the content can play a part in the actual conversation, like be, be a con conversational good. And if you hit, if you hit that, if you hit the, 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 how the, the content relates to some sort of a social value, uh, the distribution is kind of built in with the content. It spreads. It spreads because it's important in spreading. Um, at its Corey B wants to know, what's the last thing you guys saw online that made you laugh out loud? I mean, I, I have to say that I watch the NFL bad lip reading clip at least <laughs> once a day. I, it just never gets old over and over again. Oh, like, that's great. I want it. I want it now. I, I can't get now. into that. I don't know why. It's just, it kills me. I mean, that thing is just so funny. 
Um, Tyler showed me a GIF earlier. Oh, God, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is me being honest <laughs> of him at the White House. This is bullying, by the no, way. No, it's not. This is me being honest. I laughed out loud at it, and you were okay. You showed it with to me with an intention of Zay's number three. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it was a GIF of him at the White House with Barack Obama, and his face just looked hilarious. Context. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Barack was speaking. And they like have an intense close-up. This is all in one GIF, so just close your eyes, imagine. Um, Brock is speaking, and then they pan over to me. They pan past like four they other pan, YouTubers that are all like, listening like, intently. They had the intent to go straight to my face for a very dramatic reaction or something. They don't know what they expected, but I'm sitting there like. <laughs> so and I like couldn't be less interested in the president, is what it comes across as. And so that's going around. <laughs> So that's so that, my answer, yeah. That's gotta, that might be my answer, too, because when I saw it, I literally started gasping. It was, it was this morning. I was like, well, this is the end. That's it. Is drunk social media-ing the new drunk texting? Do you guys? Yeah. Maybe. I yeah. do wake up and check my phone for outgoing texts and Twitters. <laughs> I definitely had a tweet this morning at 3 a.m. Yeah. Uh, that I found this morning at 10 a.m. And um, it was very, <laughs> I don't know what I was going These for. These are blackout? These are, like, no, no, no. Like, no. I, just drunk. I was not blackout, blackout no, but I was just... definitely feeling something. Yeah. Right. Uh, you may go investigate. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's a thing. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing. I never like get blackout, so I'm like. But there is something in that, which is like, you know, when, when we're in this constant sort of flow of, of social content and, and when social content becomes performative, like inhibitions, when they go away, right. stuff gets real and mm -hmm. it gets interesting. Hashtag shares Twitter account. Hashtag awesome. I don't think shares drunk host. though. I don't think she is either, which makes it. <laughs> That's a terrible high five. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> if you could take back one social interaction, what would it be? Ooh. Has there been something? By the way, you know what? Better question. Do you delete? Po do you delete tweets? Because I feel like deleting oh. a tweet is some kind of an admission of guilt. I will delete a tweet if I make a joke and someone tells me, oh, so-and-so already made that joke, and then I will oh. delete it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tyler, do you? I don't really, I don't think I del I mean, I probably do, but like, if it's like a flop or something, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you didn't see anything. <laughs> it was not funny, and we both know, shush. Um, I will de delete tweets if I have typos. I'm crazy like that. Oh, um, yeah. in, yes. But the problem is, some people, and I don't know why they would do it, have my tweets sent to their phone, and then they send me screenshots of the same tweet attempted like four times, and they're like, we see your typos. I know you're going through it. <laughs> um, so that's a regular daily thing. Renee Robinson just tweeted and said, so say our agency isn't Bravo, we're not. How do we drive a lot of engagement with very little budget? Does it matter? You guys don't have, what are your budgets? <laughs> the production cost right. <laughs> is whatever the alcohol costs. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, this it's, is, it, it's, it's, I mean, if you don't have very much budget, you're gonna have to put the vehicle for marketing into the content itself. I mean, you don't, you're not gonna have paid media to put against stuff, so you're gonna have to get into the practice of understanding what the role of content is in social. I mean, the, the story of video is, social and it's mobile and so really focusing on those two areas is is where you have to you have to start you have to start looking at how people are consuming uh content in those areas uh but it is it is totally possible obviously it's a crowded landscape there's a lot of people in that world but i have to say there's not a lot of people who are really focusing on the challenge specifically about like you know an open-ended question what kind of content actually works there um this is funny adam sheehan tweeted and said, wow, Zay Frank is bigger in person than I thought. I see him taking down a bear with a pair of nunchucks right now. He's a man. Yeah. Has yeah. happened, has He's happened. He's a big guy. Yeah, he cuts his own hair, guys. Yeah, we Like a man. This. We learned this. Does he? Yeah, we I do this. cut my own hair. Yeah, wow. I do. That's a man. I admire that. Yeah. It's a nice, it's a nice cut. With, yeah. <laughs> with, a, with a stubby <laughs> pencil. <laughs> I, I like whip it out at the right length. Um, who do you guys think is bubbling up to be the next big Tyler or Grace? Who's going to be the next big star? I think Grace is bubbling up to be the next Grace. <laughs> oh, uh, I would agree. Well, well I think so. okay. 
don't turn this on me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do think so. I mean, like, I'm not being facetious there. I think that I think what's what's sort of amazing about your career is that you have you sort of made a choice to uh, you know turn a different course, and with that comes a lot of rebuilding and reestablishing. And it's pretty amazing how fast you've done it and how you know, you've leveraged a lot of the pieces uh, that, that have gotten you popular to reignite uh, a career, so. He's talking about your hair color change. Yeah, I, I get it. Your hair color. Um, <laughs> that's how you get subscribers, guys, change your hair. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it answers come, uh, some of your other questions, too, about that agency saying that they're not Bravo. I mean, it's really about um, finding your voice and finding your point of view on everything that you're talking about. And so your videos feel authentic, they feel real, they feel like they're coming from a real perspective, from a real human, and my videos are. And my old videos were owned by a company, but my voice wasn't owned. And so that's what I took with me, and it was an experiment to see if the audience resonated with my voice or with the corporation, and they resonated with the voice. And that was a true testament to them and to the community of YouTube to um, come together and like so willingly, and uh, Tyler, you were amazingly w supportive of championing a new channel, and it was really, really great. Um, so I think that but this is a chance to give some some up and coming people some well, props. Yeah, so, so let's I keep know, talking about exactly. ourselves. So, <laughs> my answer was going to be the worst I answer possible. I, I, there's this one girl I love, Candice Carrizales, who she's like 16 or 17 years old, and she just has such a mature sense of humor for her age. She's done a lot of stuff with Soul Pancake. I don't think she's with them anymore, but she's great, and I think she's so young and has such a handle on her own sense of humor already that I. I see really, hopefully, great things for her. Who do I think is up and coming? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the people that I've like loved and championed are thankfully doing a lot of their own things now. So like, I'm trying to think of who is like bubbling under. Right, right. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping, so l last year I did uh, a full month of collaborations. Um, with a whole bunch of YouTubers, and this upcoming year I want to do it again and hopefully do like a lot of new talents. Because like I've done a collaboration with like every YouTuber, I feel like that's like you know all the British crew, all the like right. those people. So Never I'm hoping to do it like to expose a lot of. We'll you'll Nothing. we'll talk. <laughs> um, well, you'll shave my head. <laughs> I'll my shave man, yours. My man Adam Zeller wants to know when BuzzFeed is going to run out of quizzes. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that is possible. I think there's sort of an endless well. That that is in my <laughs> uh, area of expertise. Uh, the quizzes. Right. I, I think that they're incredible. I mean, there's recently one that uh, hit 37 million, uh, you know, uh, answers. Uh, and I I think that, you know, what what you don't sort that what's what's not really surfaced in that is that that this challenge of quizzes has been a three-year process of getting the technology right, getting it to a point that lots of editors can play with it. Very scientific. Um, but uh, but I, I, think they're, I think they're amazing, and when the writing and the, the, the options and everything like that come together, there, it, there's something so like really, really fun about it, and it actually is sort of like self-reflective. I run the video uh, uh, portion right. of it, and I'm dying to figure out what quizzes look like in video. I mean, oh, I, I yeah. think it's... Oh, choose your own adventure video. That used to be like a thing. Is the, is, and also, like, even passive quizzes, where, where you're just asked the question, and then three of the answers go away. Yeah. Uh, so you don't really have yeah. to do much, but we're sort of testing yourself. I also did a series, uh, and still do them, called The Human Test, which, which you just sort of... You, uh, they're designed to see if you're a human, and you just sort of talk Would about these like horribly revealing, awful things that you only think that you do, but then you just surface them, and you have to like make a little check if you do. I want to do that. I know. Um, Sounds yeah, like a great three, challenge. There's three versions of it so far, and the, the hardest one is is on love and loss, but uh, the other two are, are a little lighter and, and <laughs> cuter. <laughs> I'll um, do it. I am a corgi. I'm Kim Richards and the Dowager Countess, by the way. <laughs> In case anyone is, in case anyone is interested, um, but I do love those quizzes. They're so funny. Yeah, you guys did a Camp Dakota quiz. It was great. Oh yeah. Yeah, which Camp Dakota character are you? Oh my god. That was great. Very I'm accurate. Grace. Um, what? How do you guys? How can you ensure that your audience feels that you appreciate them and or and or recognize them? Um, I well. It's easy-ish for me because I spend all day online. So I'm constantly responding. And whether it's on like Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, 
like YouTube comments, whatever, I am always responding. So I think the one-on-one -on -one interaction is important. And then also I do a lot of like live streams where I like just literally it's me. I have nothing to talk about, but I'm on a live stream for three hours and we're just hanging out. Hey girl, yeah. She's like, I was there, I was there. Did you come last night? Ah, oh, holler. Um, we like, we just hang out. And so it's, to me, it's like, it's a two way street. Like I want to hang out with them in the same way that maybe they want to like connect on a personal level. Like I would, like I had dinner plans, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay in and do a live stream. Because <laughs> um, that's what I prefer to do. Um, Beautylicious TT wants to know, how do you build a fandom without losing one-on-one -on -one interaction? Ooh. Ooh. That's you. Hey. Oh, very hey, cool. Hey, Beautylicious TT. You outed yourself. What's up? Beautylicious? Beautylicious TT. I think that this, you know, Slay. my experience of this is, is, is from, from like uh, maybe 04 to, 09, 10, I was doing a lot of Emoto media, so like really looking at emotion as the, the primary thing that I was, uh, you know, thinking about and making media around. So anxiety, depression, shame, uh, all that kind of stuff. And the, the interaction with the audience was very, very close and very tight. And, uh, but it was also small, I mean, just relatively speaking. And I think, you know, when I started doing, for example, True Facts, which is a series about animals, um, uh, sort of a revamped documentary style, what happened is that my channel disproportionately became fans of that media. And so you all of a sudden, like if you change a lot, like I'm a little different than you guys in that my personality isn't totally at the core of what I do. But um, in my case, if one, when you change, the nature of your audience changes. And so, you know, my answer to that is that it can't, it, there, there's a lot of hidden challenges in keeping that kind of relationship. Um, especially the deeper you go, like if you want to do stuff about, you know, difficult, hard emotions. Speaking along with that, I think anytime you have like a big hit, it like changes what they expect. Mm -hmm. um, and so to always just remind myself, like, what's the type of video I would make w when I had zero subscribers? What's yeah. the type of video I would make if I had a day where I didn't have to talk about anything, where I didn't, I was not influenced by make another video about blah, yeah. um, what would I do then? And so like, that's the type of stuff I would want to do. A lot of people don't realize Vanilla Ice was a beat poet before Ice Ice Baby. And then it just like all went in a different direction. I can't tell if you're ever joking or I not. I literally <laughs> never know. He was just joking. <laughs> Everything he says, I'm like, oh yeah. He was just joking. No, He's like, going I'm, to translate. And Thank to you. his Wikipedia page, I go. <laughs> By the way, speaking of you not getting his joke, Kelly McBride <laughs> tweeted, this panel is a family sitcom. Andy and Zay are the parents, and Grace and Tyler are their spunky team, teens. <laughs> or we're like, Wait, no, we're not I'm, dating. No. <laughs> I was going to say, we'll not see we're, we're like Clarissa and Ferguson. Yes. Um, yes. So <laughs> Bree wants to know, do you care who watches your honey, content? Honey, you're dominating the conversation. <laughs> Bree wants to know. I thought I was being very quiet. Um, Bree wants to know, do you care who watches your content or is it just about scale? Oh, I very much yeah, care. Yeah, I care about the quality of person that watches the content. I mean, to speak on the last question a little bit, when I first started doing Daily Grace, I, I, you know, you go through those ideas of like, I'm going to make a viral video. And that thought, <laughs> just get that away from your brain because that will never happen. And then when I started to think about it more, I started creating, I was dating a guy at the time that I thought was the funniest person in the entire universe. And so I decided that I was just going to make my videos every day, imagining if only he watched this video, would he laugh? And that... <laughs> 25, 26 year old guy I was dating somehow has cultivated an audience of like 14 to 16 year old females. <laughs> but, uh, but when I do live events, like Mamrie and Hannah and I do live shows, or we go to VidCon or Playlist, these conventions, or even here we meet you guys, the quality of the audience is astounding to me. They're so sweet, they're intelligent. They're funny, uh, they're not mean-spirited, and it's really great, and that's what I care about, is keeping that audience going and growing. Um, oh, yeah, okay, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> You're not a young I, woman, but I'll take I that. Want, <laughs> I want the worst people, just <laughs> yeah. the worst people. Yeah. Just terrible, awful people to look at the media. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lillian Baker wants to know if you guys ever second guess your YouTube wardrobe. Oh my God. You're both wearing jean 
It was a denim day. It was a denim. Den we're in Austin. It's so cliche. Um, is that a thing? No, I always wear I mean, denim. I feel like Texas denim, right? Sure. Meat, meat yeah. and denim. That's yeah. it. <laughs> um, meat and denim. Yeah. Right? That's a new store I'm going to open. It also has a barbecue in the back. <laughs> um, I, yes, yes and no. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So both answers. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, I always want to look nice, but sometimes I just don't give any of the shits, and I just have to be that way, and that's okay. And I'm sort of offended the question wasn't even posed to me. <laughs> because it's just, it just implies that I just don't. It's just, I've, I gave up about 20 years ago. Just, sometimes there's food left over, some other meals. I do know when I'm like repeating an outfit. I'm like, have I recently worn this? Are there gypped moments that have happened? Because I like, I know I'm, again, crazy. But I'm like, I want the gif to be recognizable to go find the video for it. And I don't want there to be any conflict of like, oh, was it that video or that video? Again, these are the only thoughts, or these are thoughts that only I have. Um, that makes sense. I'm so glad you guys keep saying GIF because we do a GIF in the night on Watch What Happens Live, and I invariably get many, many tweets from people saying you're pronouncing it wrong. It's GIF, so it's definitely GIF. I say GIF. It's GIF. It's GIF. choosy. Oh, you say GIF. But I it's do. choosy programmers choose GIF. Ooh. That's that's like Smooth. the real reason behind it. Right. Um, <laughs> Funny story, uh -oh. at the White House, the only notable thing I had to say to the president um, <laughs> was he asked, is it GIF or GIF? And I said, this is my moment. Uh, I said, Mr. President, you do you. You say it however you want. Nobody's going to correct you. So I say the same to you. By the way, what were you doing at the White House? It's so unclear. Cracking <laughs> 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 A summit about one D. No, there were um, YouTuber <laughs> like YouTubers came okay. uh, and talked about like issues like healthcare, and we talked about the uh, science or the. Oh, uh, that's what happened. Yeah, we were talking about a lot of things. So I wasn't there. <laughs> By the way, how many years do you think one D has left? Ooh, girl, I don't know. Uh, -oh. uh ooh. well, I know they're contractually obligated uh, through 2016, I believe. Oh, really? So who knows? Who knows? How do I know that? Because I, I think they have two albums on, listen, this is not important. Uh, I think they have two more albums that they're contractually obligated to do in through 2016, never mind. Doesn't matter. Interesting. One Direction. Um, can you guys give me an example of someone or a brand that has impressed you with the way that they've built a huge following? Chris Hardwick. Nerdist. Yeah. I think he's built such a smart brand into such a, he knows exactly who his audience is and he's built out a variety of media over different platforms that appeal to this very specific audience and I think he's just so smart and he's also nothing but charming and positive and nice and his brand is built on like that, um, those emotions, so him for sure. I would say, I mean, an easy answer is Ellen. I think she's mm -hmm. like brilliant. I think she utilizes like the things she does to build her social audience. She realizes that, you know, the selfie, like that yeah. killed it. Um, who else? I don't know. I think Red Bull is, is, is a big answer here. I mean, I think uh, obviously the space jump was, was, was giant, but, but uh, behind the scenes, you know, they really created a, a full media company to support this stuff and, and to watch uh, how, how aggressively they're really looking at content as content. I think it's pretty amazing, and I love Vsauce as well because yeah. I think Vsauce has done just a really great job of energizing science, uh, science content, and I, I, I do think that when we talk about news, when we talk about science, when we talk about uh, a, a lot of those areas, the demographic uh, of the television viewing audience is, is just getting really old, and uh, there's a big challenge to make sure that that content lives, uh, lives you know, in places like YouTube and, and appeals to younger demographics. Um, this is a good question from Pia, uh, who wants to know, what happens if a fan turns into a stalker? How do you handle that? Knives. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, there's actually, there's a, there's, a, there's a really interesting book about this. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's in, on the, in the online world, there's lots and lots of cases of really, really horrible stuff. But one of the big things is ignore. Because, yeah. because to, 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 to engage, it's bad. To stalkers, yeah. you know, if they, if they email you 250 times and on the 251st time you say stop, 
they're, they'll be like, oh, okay, it takes Pay 250 attention. emails yeah. to get you to respond. Right, right. Right, I mean, you're just, you're just feeding right. the bees. Um, Amy H. wants to know, uh, do you ever go on vacation where you take a complete break from social? I want to. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> no, I, because I, I like enjoy it. Yeah. In the same way that I also want to like document it for myself. Yeah. Well, like the, I don't know. You, it's really good to do. I believe <laughs> it, but go. however, YouTube and like social media for me were a hobby that became a job, right. and so it's still my hobby that is right. my job, and so it's it's fun for me as much as it is my career, and so I have tried. I've tried very hard to like, I've gone on vacation where I haven't made a video, but I've, you know, posted on social media. Okay. And I, that's a small step <laughs> in the right direction. I don't know, is it right? I don't know. Sure. I'm too far Two weeks it. ago, we, uh, four YouTubers, we all went to dinner with no phones. It was like, yeah, we were like, that, look what so we're what doing. what was that like for you? What <laughs> was that like? I don't know. <laughs> I, I can't look back and recall it because it wasn't on social media. <laughs> so I have, no, I have no clue what happened. That's good. <laughs> That is very good. Um, can you guys tell us about a memorable individual social interaction that you've had with a follower, whether positive or negative? I mean, I know you have many all the time, but is there something that sticks out at you? Oh Tyler, God. that time you slept with a fan? Excuse oh. you? I just made that up. I'm, <laughs> it's I'm, too I'm late. Think, Tumblr's I'm all over up it. The Vanderpump Rules reunion right now. <laughs> I apologize. Wait, you pulled that at VidCon too. You said the same I joke, and I said, you know what I said? What? I said, oh, you consider yourself a fan? Oh. oh. So there it is. Wow. Um, did someone put awnings <laughs> up in this room? Because there's shade. This no. This uh, <laughs> this family dynamic just got really weird. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Uh oh. The sitcom, you know, ratings. <laughs> ratings. <laughs> uh, for myself, <laughs> I'll deflect. Uh, for myself personally, um, it was the first fan interaction that I had. I was doing improv in New York at the People's Improv Theater, and a girl. I, and, and I was still very much having this interpersonal conflict of like, what is legitimate comedy? Is it e internet comedy that I'm doing kind of secretly? Or is it this like s gritty on stage improv comedy that I'm doing that feels so cool, but is definitely more of a struggle. And a girl showed up to one of our shows and she sat in the front row and she was wearing a Daily Grace t-shirt. And I like, they announced our team. We walk out on stage and I was like, <gasps> Oh my God! My private life just came into my cool oh my improv God. life. <laughs> I was wow. so like, uh, like freaked out. And then I talked to her afterwards, and she was taking improv in Chicago, and she was like, so like the nicest girl. And that was a huge changing point for me of like, oh, this is right. this is cool. This is great. So, there was a period of time where like I was I was obsessed with this idea of many to one participation. Mm -hmm. And so there's there's actually a project on uh, zayfrank.com/chillout. Uh, which is a crowd-written song for a woman who had anxiety, which has been downloaded, I think, 500,000 times now. Um, but the, the interesting piece of that uh, story is that that project actually came out of a project I did before that where I tweeted when I sort of just first got on Twitter. I said, I, send me your login details for Facebook, and I will be you for a week. Oh, my God. And I, after 10 minutes, I deleted the tweet because I'd gotten 30 full logins. Right. And I ended up spending a week, I changed their password, it was part of the deal. I had them write a, 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 a one-page essay on how to be them, uh, and I did it for a week. That was like one of the coolest things I'd ever done, just like the trust that they did gave. Did their people know? No, no, their people didn't know, and, and the, one, the one that was particularly profound is like this woman was like, all right, I have a crush going, I want you to be aloof, but you know, charming. <laughs> and it was crazy, you know, like, and I'm like, like going through her past messages. I'm like, what does aloof look like to her? Like, <laughs> how, how, how am I gonna play this? And then her boss is like using Facebook to message her, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is crazy. And that's crazy. Uh, that's amazing. It, it was totally wild, yeah. Wow. And it, but you know, part of it was I wanted to know like whether the backstage versus front stage were that different, and they really weren't. And not for the for the two accounts that I did during that period of time. Um, AJ has a good question. What will be the next big social media platform? What do you think is the next thing? Hoping it comes back around to LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, open. It's all about Grindr. <laughs> Grindr. Trust me. Uh, I think, yeah, 
I mean, you know, some of this, some of this sort of like peer-to-peer -peer stuff that gets around, uh, you know, internet connectivity and things like that. I mean, obviously in the Ukraine and and uh, and down in uh, uh, Venezuela or Brazil right now, uh, the, these 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 kind of lighter weight peer-to-peer -peer, group peer-to-group uh, technologies, and obviously the purchase of WhatsApp. There's a lot. It's interesting because the, the story of technology seems to go up and then seems to retract into simplicity over and over again. And we're, we're, we seem to be going into one of those retractions where, where some of this really simple technology uh, seems to be pretty powerful uh, to, to cope with you know, how the world uh, changes. Miller Lite, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we're getting a lot of tweets about the Miller Lite, and someone was just worried that it's getting warm. Is it still? It is. It's, yeah. it's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, and, and, and whoever tweeted that, I appreciate you care. Um, <laughs> Dan okay. Holm wants to know how you guys make enough revenue as a YouTuber to make it your career. Is it a Kickstarter? Lot of no, <laughs> um, it's it's a there's a variety of ways to make money on YouTube. I mean, you get your AdSense based on um, the ads placed on your videos. We work with brands and sponsors. Um, we do live touring shows. We sell merch. Um, that's a lot of it. Yeah, uh, that's a lot of it. I mean, you, it's like any job. You have to like work your hustle. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be successful, you have to work harder. But it's also a 24 hour job. Like you are, I mean, you've created a social personality that exists on the variety of social platforms that are open 24 hours a day. So you have to make yourself like readily available or um, engaging or active on these social platforms as often or as not often as you want for yourself. I always know for myself, I try and say, okay, at least tweet two or three things a day. And there are days that I don't do that, that I feel like, oh, I didn't do my job today. Mm. Um, it's I love that, you know, in the movie Comedian, uh, where Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, is, he, he was talking about when he was struggling as a comic and uh, or it was actually after he, after he became fairly famous, but he was sort of like, oh, writing, and, and he watched a construction worker walk by, and he was like, oh, crap. Like, yeah. that yeah. dude gets right. up, and he puts in his eight to 10 hour days. Yep. Like, that's, that's what you have to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, no matter what you do, you have to like, treat it seriously. Um, getting a lot of questions about Snapchat. Um, Yates Webb wants to know, how does or how will Snapchat fit into your interaction with fans? I, you guys my Snapchat's personal. Oh. <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, I'm a lady. A not like what, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some type of dick pic it's look dick I just picks. got. The whole the humor of it, would be if we couldn't say the word dick. Oh, we can't I say mean, dick? We like can't. Healing. I'm saying dick. Um, <laughs> and we're all saying dick. We, we've all said it now. Uh, dick. No, I'm <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Snapchat, I don't know. I wouldn't. I, it's one of the only things that I keep for my friends. I don't know. I, if it were to be, I, I think it's like, I think it has too many ways that it could go bad quick. Yes. If somebody's like, if it's, if so, I'm just imagining young people using it in a way that I don't want to like have that interaction. Yeah, I saw, I think it was Hank Green or John Green, I think it was John Green put on um, on Twitter that he didn't know what Snapchat was. Oh, and no. So he opened it up and said like, here's my Snapchat, you guys can send me whatever it is. And then like two minutes later, instantly tweeted, so I've deleted my Snapchat. <laughs> 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 like, I guess he just got an influx of terrible. Um, yeah, I actually learned about Snapchat at South by Southwest last year, and I used it twice, and I was like, this sucks. <laughs> I don't use um, this. You bring up something interesting, Tyler, which is, do you, you, you know, you obviously both have these big um, personas on social media. Do you ever want to create a separate person on social media? that is just for kind of your inner circle of friends? Or do like you a private account. I thought about doing this for myself. I know a few YouTubers who have like private accounts. Right. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. I, I feel like I am confident enough in the things that I'm going to say. And I, I think the only time I have anything personal is on my personal Facebook. But like even that stuff, it's like I just always assume it can get back to anybody. So I conduct myself as if everything's public. I don't know. No, I don't have anything private. Oh, like, right. private. Eyes. <laughs> You're done. You've had enough. He does not. Dad has d is over. He's done. Give me my nunchucks. Yeah. Won't take down this, a bear. <laughs> this 
is the episode where we a have bear? the intervention dad. Daddy's thirsty. <laughs> okay. Am I the daddy? Yeah, you're the I guess. Pa daddy and papa. <laughs> Complicated. All right. Um, I want to do a little speed round with each of you of just three questions for each of you. Starting with you, Zay. What's your favorite viral video of all time? Uh, the, uh, the Charlie, uh, bit my finger. Um, what's your, who's your favorite internet cat? Uh, Lil Bob. Um, give us three true facts about yourself that others may not know. Oh. These questions are um, hard. Three true facts about myself. Uh, number one, I, uh, when I was a played catch, uh, catcher uh, when I was in Little League, and I was so afraid of getting hit by the ball that I wore giant styrofoam pads <laughs> that, that I made for myself under my uniform. <laughs> so I was like, you know, not a popular kid. Uh, <laughs> I was also, uh, I used to have to shop in the Huskies section. This is my one person in the branding world that I would like to fist fight with, is whoever came up with that. Um, and I clamored to get a, a Siamese cat for like a year, and then when I got one, my parents got it for me, uh, it would curl up on my head and fart every night. <laughs> and and I, I think my parents got rid of it because of that reason. Um, so, so now you know me a little bit better. That's good. And, like, you know, <laughs> and I also and know that the word husky is going to be reintegrated into my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. It's a really good word. It's not it's unless a good word. you are husky. It's unless you're a cute. child, right? Yeah. Shopping for jeans yes. Yes. in a separate section called the husky section. I, yeah. I was there. It's I've been called it's husky like, it's, myself. It's in, yeah, it's in yeah. a small little like dusty corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grace Shames. Who is shame. your dream celebrity retweet, Grace? Share. Uh, what is the best online social pickup line that you've ever gotten? Oh, the best online social pickup line? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, oh, God. Women's be half minded. <laughs> the pickup line? It got me. It got you. <laughs> If you could be any zoo animal, what would it be and why? Uh, a zookeeper. <laughs> the human. <laughs> the human. Um, okay, Tyler. Oh, God. Who is your arch social nemesis? Oh, you can say it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no, 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 no. Um, hmm. You know, I don't have many enemies. Good Lord. I, I don't, all right. Ooh. I'm a shit stir. Um, <laughs> yeah. Who is your biggest online crush? Ooh. Um, Darren Chris, maybe? He's like just everything. Um, okay, so we're gonna, I want to play Mary Shag Kill with you. Okay. But with the 1D guys. Okay. So you have five choices. I'm very ready for this. Okay. I'll throw all of them. Yeah. I'll, I'm ready. So, no, I'm not even giving you any names. Just pick. Oh. From the five of them, pick one to marry, one to shag, one to kill. Um, oh, do I have to kill yeah. someone? Um, hmm. I will not kill. I'll unfriend. Um, <laughs> or unfollow or something. I'll unfollow Niall because there can only be one blonde. Um, <laughs> I will shag ooh, Zane because it's Zane. Um, and then friend Harry, because he's like so charming and fun. That was the easiest. That was easy. <laughs> right. Very good. We got a lot of questions wanting to know uh, how you guys navigate working for, maintaining your voice while working for brands. Um, I just did a, a campaign for St. Ives recently, and they were fantastic because I told them and we collaborated on really making the spot that we made for St. Ives in my voice for my audience instead of making it a commercial of me just saying words that I wouldn't normally say. And it went over really, really well. It came out, I think, last week or the week before. And they were, they were an excellent, excellent brand to work with because they understood that the audience resonates with what they're familiar hearing and seeing. And they worked with that. And it was great. It was really good. I loved it. Thanks. Um, I would say I don't even consider working with a brand unless they give me as much 
artistic freedom as I want. Um, I thought you were going to say, as much money as... Unless they give me yeah. millions of dollars. <laughs> um, I just picture you as the DuckTales opening credits, just <laughs> swimming in the pool. Just, that's me, you know. <laughs> yes. I, think, I mean, but that's, that's sort of the exciting story that's going on right now, is, is branded content and whatever that means. And I think the, whatever it means, I think what, what it implies is that uh, audiences should expect uh, a higher bar when it comes uh, to branded content. We should be looking forward to uh, things that are sponsored by brands, and there's right. a lot of different ways to go uh, that route because brands often have lots of different kinds of mandates. Sometimes they have to show off a product, sometimes they just want general awareness, sometimes it's a flash sale. But I think that there is a really exciting time right now, and part of it is because of the fact that they're reaching out and working out uh, some of these issues with you know, folks like you who sometimes like have a line in the sand, sometimes are willing to sort of negotiate a little bit. Um, but I think it's a really exciting time right now for branded content. But it, it, is a, it is an argument sometimes, and it's definitely a discussion. Yes, always a discussion. We've, uh, in my time at Bravo, I've managed a lot of brand integrations. And the, most, and the reason why I think they've all been very successful is that we've never lost sight of what, what if you don't lose sight of your brand and your voice, so that the people won't look at you and say, wait, you're selling out, or you're, that doesn't fit. Why are you doing this? Then I think it's, it's the key to it working. Yeah, we um, were, one other thing, we were talking about um, the St. Ives thing. Yeah. And we were just talking about how excited we are that a lot of our audiences are excited for us. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, oh, you're selling out, oh, you're doing this, and blah, blah, blah. They realize that these are aspirations that we have. Yeah. Like, to do a commercial, that's huge. But a lot of people could be like, oh, like, no, nah, you're just a YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. They are, they very much o overwhelmingly are positive about it. Yeah. I think it, yeah, that speaks to your is, audience. Honestly, like, we've been nice. through, I, I feel like we've been through 30 to 40 years where, where advertising content just kind of, like, got away from itself. It just got so weird. It was yeah. these strange little inserts that interrupted programming that we that we were watching and we couldn't do anything about it and it just it kind of like spiraled into something strange and i think that one of the there's an amazing opportunity that's that's happening right now where where you know there it's it is content it actually is content and not only that but we consume brands daily we talk about brands all the time it's not such a you know disassociated to love brands, to love brand content. I mean, they're, they're, uh, they play a big part in our, our lives anyways. Miller Lite. <laughs> Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina um, <laughs> wants to know what your Real Housewives intro line would be. Anyone have one? Oh, I've told you mine before. Say it again. I put the aw in awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh... All of mine are inappropriate. Yeah, well, it's all right. We said That's dick. That's okay. I, we said dick earlier, so I guess I'm free. <laughs> um, mine's just me saying dick. <laughs> <laughs> me turning around. <laughs> you don't want to know what I'm holding. They'll Photoshop it in later. Yeah, make it happen. You guys, um, tweet me a couple more questions to ask. Do you use the hashtag askhosts? I'm thinking about that. I know, I'm just imagining hosts. your opening credits. <laughs> Um, it just sounds so wrong. It just sounds Say what so would wrong. yours be? I feel What's myself that? blushing. What would yours be? He stole mine. <laughs> I stole yours? <laughs> dick. It'd be dick. Deal with it. <gasps> dick. Ooh. Oh, okay. Mine Spunky. is, I may be a man, but I fight like a girl. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, <laughs> Lillian Baker wants to know, when creating a brand, should you use your name or a creative title? I'm so happy I went with my name. Yes, you and are. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say, whatever you decide to go, I don't think there's one better than the other, but whatever you decide to go for, make sure that your branding across all social media platforms is the, the same. same. Yeah, because when I first signed up for Twitter, I thought it'd be really quirky for have, to have my Twitter handle be Gibla, which is my last name backwards, <laughs> which is <laughs> impossible for anyone to find. And I had a friend like three years ago be like, you need to change that. Like to an your intervention. Name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did, and I'm better for it. Yeah, the letter that I, he wrote to me was. I mean, honestly, a like, letter. I, I, if, I mean, if the if it's a serious question in terms of like these kinds of things, I would actually say that uh, using your own name really implies that that 
you know, that channel, that, that kind of content is going to be you. And that is one particular media opportunity. I would, I would actually suggest that you do both and use uh, a, a more general type of identity to explore some of the mechanics of media that, that are not gonna be available to you if, you're, if your face is front and center. Um, because I will say that you know, building up a brand, uh, a lot of people think that that just equates to building up something that has your face in it, your voice, but that's not necessarily the only goal uh, when you're talking about brand and you're talking about IP and the value of identity. Um, so I think that it's, it's, it's you know, there, there's different challenges that come with, with either one, but you probably shouldn't start a Twitter account with a reverse of your last name. That we know. Um, <laughs> Kelsey Harris wants to know how you guys gained followers early on. How did you do it? Paid. Um, paid, I, <laughs> paid so much money. I said, Grace, <laughs> please follow me. Um, I, you just have to keep at it. And I have, like, a, I think my people get that I will shamelessly self-promote to the point where it's just like, okay, they expect it, I'm, I'm gonna do it. You, it's like, we are our own marketing team. So you I, have to, like, you have to. Yeah, and I, you and I are a little different in that way. But I mean, <laughs> no, 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 not, not to say I'm the opposite, but I've learned that, yeah, I was very hesitant to, like, promote any of my stuff and, like, you know, tweet about it. I wanted to keep my Twitter just for jokes, et cetera. And then I realized, like, no, that is how you grow. But it, it, you grow based on collaboration, too. Like, mm -hmm. that's where I really started to see growth is when I started to be active in the YouTube community and collaborate with people that were on my same level at the time. It's You always want to be, like... I remember writing to Tabuscus one time, Toby Turner, uh, to his like whatever email address was on his website and was like, hello, my name is Grace <laughs> Helbig. I would love to do a collaboration with you. And then I never heard back from him and I was like so upset. I was like, why wouldn't he write me back? He's a hater. <laughs> yeah. But then I realized that, oh, you're aiming too high too quickly. Like you have to collaborate with the people that are on your level and the high tides raise all ships. When you and I tell a story yeah. and I always tell the story that we like, when we're together. Um, so back in the day, I think it was like 2008, nine, something. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, I know what you're the, say. Day. the day. That was the day. <laughs> wow. Uh, way back. Um, papa. Grace and I, <laughs> listen, Papa. Um, Grace and I both had like, I think, 4,000 subscribers. And she reached out and we did our first collaboration. No, you had 92,000. Literally, subscribers. not true. That's so true because I remember you. I'll show you screenshots. Well, you reach out to me this on Twitter. This is like Twitter. a Housewives reunion right now. <laughs> I'm like, no. No, you reach out to me on Twitter, and I was like, oh my god, this guy likes my stuff. This is amazing. And then when you said that you would collaborate with me, I was like, ah, freaking out. Well, about the collaboration it. is still up. It's iconic. <laughs> we it's are very so talented. We're there's, both acting in there's, it. There's one thing that's like underlying this question yeah. and this discussion, which is, which is I think pretty fascinating about modern media, is that. To some degree, we still hold on to this metaphor of this, right? People showing up to a room and then you performing in front of them. And, and so that would be like what fans and subscribers are, right? You have more of those, you do better. But the truth, when you look at uh, you know, the subscribers uh, on YouTube, for example, m the high watermark for very engaged channels would be 40% of your views come from your subscribers. So that's 60% of your views that are not coming from your subscribers. And if you dig deep, like in, uh, in the entire BuzzFeed ecosystem, we're talking about 20% of our views come from our subscribers. So that I think that the metaphor is slightly wrong and people overvalue the subscribers and the 100%. followers and aren't really thinking in some cases about the impact that their, that their uh, content has because of social and because of social spread and that every piece of content is really gonna be uh, reaching out into ecosystems that don't know very much about you. Um, yeah. Um, Leah Shaw wants to know who makes your pendant, Grace? Top Shop. Top Shop. Yeah. Excellent. Rawr. It's cute. <laughs> it's super cute. <laughs> I approve. I love it. Thank you. Um, that's what we're here for today, to talk about accessories. That's right. Absolutely. We have six, six minutes and 17 seconds left. So get your uh, tweets into to Ask Host. Um, a lot of people are <laughs> standing by the door and want you guys to come out there afterwards, just so you know. Not a question. So. <laughs> Not a question. Are no. they going to hurt us? <laughs> No one are is. They Ooh, the Giving Lab wants to know how much revenue you guys are making each year. I like that question. Same question to them. 
Yep. Ah, <laughs> like that's some, that, um, I don't ask my doctor what he's making. <laughs> that is funny. Sarah I do. Gordon wants to know <laughs> cuz I want to date. Who is your him. favorite advertising voice on social media and why? Well, let's I mean we should be fair. If we if we if we say say uh, 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 a question on stage, you should at least sort of like point towards it. I I don't think anybody here would would be comfortable like talking about their personal income. But I do think that it's worth pointing out that in the YouTube ecosystem, it does support millionaires, right? I mean, there are people that are making in the you know 100k, 150k, and and upwards on a single channel even uh, uh, on a monthly basis. Um, I, I, in in terms of you know individual producers and things like that, I think that there are kind of upper limits when you talk about like uh, you know individual producers, but. You know, cracking that barrier, you do have folks that are starting to work with small teams and have networks of channels and things like that where the advertising revenue can, can go up. Um, but I, I think that you see it in, in a kind of logarithmic or inverse log curve. So there's very few people, maybe a hundred people or so on YouTube right now that are in the, in the one plus million range that are individual producers. Uh, and then most people, you know, it goes down. But you can, you can uh, it, it's an ecosystem that does support a lot of living wages. What is the next question? Um, <laughs> what, what are your favorite advertising uh, voices on social media? Like brands? Yeah. Taco Bell was great. Yeah, they do um, a great job. Trying to think. I like, I mean, I, 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 love, I love brands that are sort of reaching out into different spaces. There's sort of legacy stuff that I, that, that's actually, you know, started on television that's ported to the web really well. I think Skittles. You know, has, has has maintained like a really fun, weird, creative Skittles. Voice. It's yeah. just so weird. I mean, yeah. they just embrace the weird and yeah. just keep going. The one where he's like you're French kissing the dude and his teeth are Skittles. It's like, you know, kind of partially a complete nightmare for me, but I but I sort of love it. Um, You're talking about it now. They yeah, did a I great think Virgin, job. <laughs> Virgin is doing a great job. Yeah. Like I, I love uh, Purina. For, for lots of different reasons. Well, mainly just because we, we, you know, I, I voiced an ad for them recently, and they, yeah. they were willing to do some pretty fun and, and, and uh, out there stuff. Um, what device do you guys post, tweet, etc. most from? Phone, computer, tablet, what? Phone. From Mary. Phone. Mostly from my computer. Computer. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the old guy's a little bit of <laughs> the young people. It's, well, here's the problem. I'm always home, and so, like, it's just ten times easier to do And so my thumbs yeah. always make terrible spelling mistakes when I tweet from my phone. Yeah. So. Whatevs. <laughs> uh, Cody wants to know, what's your favorite Netflix binge? Ooh. Uh, House of Cards. Is that on Netflix? That is, yeah. Right. Yeah. Amazing show. Just incredible. Mine's Friday Night Lights. I just <gasps> oh. keep watching it over and over and over. Yeah. The coach on that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Thirsty. Um, I'm really into, what's it called? Uh, what's you're, that? You're Breaking Bad. Familiar. But it's not on Netflix, right? It's on. Oh, it is on Netflix? Yeah. I've been watching it on HBO Go. <laughs> is it? Oh, wait, no. Maybe I'm screen. Huh? <laughs> Excuse me? It was on my computer. It was on the computer. <laughs> Uh, and I, Veep, I like Veep. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't watch a lot of Netflix. Um, okay, so to wrap this thing up, I want each of you to to give us a one helpful piece of information that will give someone a leg up on creating a brand or identity on social. I, I mean, for, for me, I think the, the, the main thing is very early, figure out what you're trying to do in terms of optimizing. And I, this, this might sound a little too data driven, but it's like just have one thing where you're trying to make a number go up. And that could be the number of emotional comments that you see. It could be raw traffic. It could be the amount of Facebook shares that a particular thing has. But focusing on one metric that you're trying to get better on, you can always change the metric over time. But otherwise, like you're just kind of in this big, quasi-confused space of, of making media partially for yourselves, partially for the audience. Uh, you know, for, for my, my, the studio uh, that we have, it's, it's really about social. It's about whether people share it, whether they're using the media in that way. Uh, go ahead. Um, I would say 
focus on finding your voice and with that it's a lot easier to uh, decide for yourself what you don't want to do versus what you do want to do and sometimes just peeling away all the things you don't want to do will help you really find what you do want to do for instance I don't talk about history or politics on my channel ever and I have had in the beginning like a thought of should I do that and I just didn't want to do it and that helped mold my brand so figure out what you don't want to do um, I would say be consistent and don't give up because I think a lot of people would get discouraged uh, early on that like, oh, I'm not getting the amount of views I expect this video to get or things like that. But I think it's like nobody has their first video to be a hit, very rarely. Um, and plus, like during that time where you're making videos when you start, it's practice. You're figuring out your voice. You're figuring out how you edit and you're learning how you film and how you talk to a camera and all these things that like you may think come really naturally to YouTubers, they had, trust me, they have hundreds of videos privated because they went through that process of figuring it out and now they have found what works best for them. Um, yeah, I, I think you just have to go through that like little moment of figuring out what works for you um, and just chug through it till you get to the other side. Very good, thank you guys so much. Zane, Andy. Grace, Tyler, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.